I hate this camera. Oh my god, it's recording. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clems Electronic Workshop. Nobody else's workshop, just Cool Dude Clems. Sauce. Welcome to Cool Dude Clems Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I can't believe it. I just said sauce. Anyway, in today's episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to build this circuit. Yes, it's another flyback driver, but this should be the last one for a while. Now, I cannot take credit for this circuit because I did not design this. This is just one I found on the internet that I'm going to try and see if I can build. I've seen this circuit running and it does work pretty good, so I'm going to see how well it works when I build it up. Alright, so... I've built up the oscillator part of the circuit, and we'll just give it a little bit of a test to make sure that this part works. So, I'm going to power this up. Now, for some reason, the chip requires 18 volts. I'm not exactly sure if that's right or not, because I don't really know much about this chip. The UC3844. So, I'm going to power it up through a resistor, just to make sure. That way, should something go wrong, I'm not so likely to burn something up. So let's see if we get anything. And... Yeah, it's not doing anything. I was expecting to at least see a square wave. Unless... I just had a thought. We got a current feedback right here with these three... with these five resistors. And I think with leaving pin 3 just floating like that, it's not going to do anything, so... Put pin 3 to ground, it's going to try to oscillate as hard as it can to push enough current through the circuit which isn't even connected, so... It should oscillate now. So let's see what we get now. And, oh! There we are. I was right. Let me just move that down a little bit. We has an oscillation. So let's see, does this control do anything? Okay, not at the moment. Now this one should adjust the frequency. Okay, that seems to be working. Working well enough. Alright then, now I've got to set this to 21 kilohertz. So, I'll just stick that in there. To start it oscillating. Right now we're at 25 kilohertz, so I need to go down a little bit. Up a little bit. Okay, that should be good enough. Right then, well, I guess I get it. Get on and do stuff with all this stuff. So anyway, I'm going to work on my power supply. And for my power supply, I'm going to use... Donuts! Can you hear some noise out there? They do this. I mean, once or twice is okay, but every night? That's just unacceptable. Also, why does nobody in this country talk English anymore? They might just well be going hooba dooba wooba dooba wooba dooba for all I can make out, but anyway, getting back to the subject of the transformers. Because I want to use two of these in parallel for double the current, I've got to make sure that I've got these in phase. So I'm going to turn the power on. I'll just take a little voltage measurement and make sure that these are on. I don't want to try and shock myself because there is enough voltage on these transformers secondaries to shock myself. So be careful. Okay, we've got 26 volts coming out of that one. So what I want to do is find out which pair of wires I need to connect together. Because I don't want to cause a short circuit. So I've got my meter connected to one of the wires on this transformer. 
even though you cannot see it, because I didn't realise that was out of the shot. So you'll just have to believe me that the meter is connected to one of the output wires on one of the transformers. And I've got the two centre taps connected together. And whichever wire gives me no voltage on the other transformer, I'll know which wires to connect together. So let's see what we get from this one. OK, that's given us 52 volts, so we don't want to connect those two wires together. So this one should give us zero, or pretty much close to zero. Yep, so these two wires here are perfectly safe to connect together. And of course the two remaining wires can also be connected together. Transformers are wired up, so I'm just going to turn this on, and we should have about 52 volts. Of course, it would help if the meter was on AC. And indeed we do. And you've got to remember, this is rail to rail, not centre tap to rail, so uh, we could measure from the centre tap, which is right here. And that gives us 26 volts on that winding. And 26 volts on that winding. So now I've just got to hook this up to a big ass rectifier. And we'll have the power supply for this part of the circuit. Here at the power supply for the MOSFETs primary. So I've got two transformers connected in parallel, then a rectifier. So this side of the rectifier rectifies this side of the transformer and puts it into the capacitors. And this side of the rectifiers rectifies this side of the transformer and puts that into the capacitors. So yeah, even though I'm using a full, a full bridge rectifier here, I'm only using half of it because of the way I've got everything connected up. I've got these two beefy capacitors read at 63 volts at 8200 microfarads which should provide plenty of smoothing and this little capacitor here so any high frequencies from the circuit don't get back into this lot because these big capacitors they're not going to block high frequencies they'll block some of it but not all of it so this little capacitor here just um, will block most of that so we've got plenty of smoothing and if any of that sounds confusing to you, well, don't worry, because I just played this footage back and it sounds confusing to me as well. So, hopefully this little schematic of how the transformers are wired up should help clear up a few things. So we should get um, 26 volts times 1.41, so we should get about 36 volts out of this thing, more or less. So I'll turn this on and let's see what we actually get. And, just as I predicted, 36 volts. Of course, now I've got to discharge these capacitors, because these things can hold a charge for a hell of a long time. Anyway, I've just got to do that, and then I'll build this part of the circuit, and we'll see how good it works. Okay then, well let's do this. <clears throat> I've got it all built up now. Some of the parts in this aren't exact to the schematic. Like, for instance, these five resistors here. Well, I've only used four resistors because what we've got here is a couple of resistor packs where there's two resistors in each package and they're all wired in parallel. So that's four resistors. It comes to about the same what we've got here. So the, the 3 and 3 nanofarad capacitor, I've actually used a 4.7 nanofarad because I don't have any 3 and 3s or 3.3s rather. And this 470 nanofarad capacitor, I've used a 1 microfarad. Still non-electrolytic though, so that's still okay. And this capacitor here, well I don't have any of those, so I had to use a 330, which is this one right here. Anyway, enough waffle. I waffle waffle bore you, so let's see what this thing can do. So I'll turn the chip on. So my chip's on, and I'll turn these transformers on. And you'll see it in action. That's working pretty good. And I got this to a point where it's quite nice and quiet now. I get a nice good arc from that. Now 
now I'll try with another flyback. This is this one here. Drive well 12 turns of wire for my primary. The only trouble is I don't know which way around the primary should be. With the other flyback I used, I had the primary in the right polarity, but I don't know about this one, so... I'll turn it on, on low power, because I've got these transformers on a switchable ballast. And we'll see what happens. Well, it's giving us a nice long throwing spark. It's not quite as hot as it was with the other transformer. Okay, I shall reverse the primary connections. We'll see what that gives us. And it's not as good. So, that means that the way we had it round before was the right way. And now, in the dark. Still stone cold. All right, let's try it without the ballast. I don't think my digital thermometer liked that very much, though. Oh, well. Okay, so here are the arcs from the other flyback. With 12 turns on the primary. And hopefully the camera will not drift out of focus. like a ZVS. And this, this heatsink, that is if you could see it, let me just find the light on this camera, this is still cold. It's incredible. Well, I'm quite impressed with that so far. Now, I would love to get my hands on some much better flybacks than the ones I have. I mean, these three here are the only really good flybacks that I have. Although you didn't really get to see this one in operation because I cannot wind any wire thicker than this onto this primary because of this stupid way they've designed it here. I mean, look, you can see that right there. I mean, how ridiculous is that? And all the other flybacks I've got are either too small to really care about or they've got the capacitor and multiplier in them which I don't really like. Or they're like this one where it's impossible to wind a good primary. So, 
Later on, I'm going to go looking for some much better flybacks. I mean, I know somewhere where there's a TV, some old... There's some old repair shop I know that often throws out TVs. Unfortunately, in all these places where I can find good scrap electronics, there are always people about. Even in the dead of a Sunday afternoon, which is when I recorded this. Tons of people about. Yet, yeah, if I was to go along there during the busiest part of the week, and I didn't care if anybody saw me or not, there wouldn't be a soul around. That just seems to be the way things go. I did, however, manage to pinch a compressor out of an old fridge that somebody had thrown out. So if that's going to become a vacuum pump, i just got to drain it and make sure it can pull a good vacuum. And then, I'll see if I can make a vacuum chamber and put some arcs in that, but that's all for future videos. Anyway. Enough rambling, so until next time, goodbye.